opinion how we all do my name is Jacob welcome back or welcome back to tired reads if you're new here and welcome to the last video of 2022 today's video we're going to talk about all the books that my favorite books of 2022 it's that simple why I'm making it harder than I so throughout the year I've been keeping a shelf on goodreads that have some book but I also did a bad job of keeping it because after scrolling through some I realized there's some that I didn't include but to kick things off, we're going to start with some honorable mentions. So the first one I don't have is The King and the Dragonflies by, by Case and Calendar. I loved this book for like the ex exploration of grief and sexuality in it. The narrator for the audiobook was great and I really enjoyed it, especially for middle grade. It was really good. I do think like all ages could read it, so I don't think you should limit yourself just because it's middle grade, but um... I'm a little iffy for it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna conclude it. I don't know if it's the right choice, but it's the right choice. It is Finley Donovan is killing it. Really enjoyed reading this this year. The audiobook's great. I'm currently listening to the second audio, Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead. This is by El Cosimano. This is a mother, a writer who's overheard in Panera talking with her agent about submitting her deadlines. And she writes fiction, crime fiction, and someone overhears her and hires her to become a hit woman and she accidentally does and it's hysterical so very very fun love this the second one is just as fun another one is siren queens by niveau i read this in my most anticipated books of 2022 i think the second episode yep because there's only two this i really loved for the writing i loved the plot of following our main character into becoming a actress especially this time where she refused to be the help. She wanted to be the main character because she was Asian-American. She didn't want to be placed into the stereotypes and following the lengths that she went to. And the slight magical element that was added into it was just superb. I loved this. I loved the pacing of it, the cover, gorgeous, and the, and like the inside look of like the early Hollywood film industry it was great. And I really enjoyed this and I highly recommend this. And it's small. What more can you say? And the final, like, honorable mention is Night Film by Aaron, nope, Marisha, Marisha Pessel. Um, this is, like, a mixed media book. We are following this private detective slash author of a, like, newspaper coming in and trying to solve this mystery. And it's very, like, we're following this, like, famous director who puts his actors through it to get the results that he wants. And he's a horror director, so things are, there's, like, a slight... Is it magical? Is it not? I really enjoyed this. Um, the pacing was a little, a little bit rough for me, I will say, but I really enjoyed like how much it gripped me. I loved our main character. The mixed media in it was great. A lot of the times you couldn't tell if it was real or not, if there was like a fictional fantastical thing happening. So I really liked how this played into it. Now onto the actual top five books of the year. I'm gonna start with this one. These are kind of in no particular order slash in order. I can't really decide. But the first one is the Inheritance Trilogy by Ed K. Jemison. I really loved this. Um, I want to reread the first one. This is bind up of all three books plus the novella at the end. The second and third book I gave five stars. The first one I gave or just because it was a little hmm, but I fell in love with the rest of them and I couldn't put them down and I just wanted to like keep picking them up and reading it so much and especially because it's a big book come on it's so good it was so engaging it's like the the first book is this girl comes back to this kingdom that her mother was excommunicated exiled from and they have imprisoned the gods and have used them to help control and help win battles and such our main character falls in love with one of the gods and the whole family and we follow them and their pursuit for freedom, how they make things right, and then the following books are what happens to them. So this is a cheat because it's a series and it's technically three and a half books. Mish. But I'm including it and you can't do anything about it. And then my next book is The Master of Jin by P. Jelly Clark and this is such a fun book because following this like alternate Cairo, Egypt, where they have jinns running amok and they tame them to help work with them or like use them to their advantage. And there's this one that's coming released into the world that's bad for everyone. Um, but we're following this detective and her jinn and how their banter is great. Their writing is great. I love P. Jelly Clark's writing. 
It was very well paced. It was a little steampunky, so it was a little fun. The banter between Fadma and Al Jai. Oh, ooh, no. Uh, Al Jai's. I don't think that's how you pronounce it, but that's her partner's Jin. Her Jin partner. Anyways, it was such a fun pace because it's his first novel, so like that's exciting. I can't wait to see what it does. And then plus it adds in some Egyptian mythology a little bit, mixed in with like more like African and like Egyptian of the jinn and like what could have happened if they were alive and how they world rule the world. And it's just so fun. So fun. I highly recommend this. I don't know which one to pick next. The final three, and I don't know. I think this is the right one. Uh, the next one is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher, pa Christopher Paolini. I read this, and it's a big, almost 900-page space opera. It was so much fun. I can't wait for the next one to come out. We're following this um, ship full with full of people that, you know, touch an alien life form, and she it follows the repercussions of her and how she deals with that, but it also interacts with, like, the shipmates, the crewmates and what becomes of them trying to prove their innocence and i just love this so much i love the narrator of the audiobook reading it in tandem was great i want to reread this but i'm just like that's a lot of book <laughs> so i don't know when i'll get around to that but i will and it's a pretty cover i just hate how it says paulini and not like anything but anyway there's a sequel coming out next year which i'm very excited for um if you like space opera i think this would be fun even just heavy sci-fi this is very fun and all takes place on a ship and the banter between her and the ship and the sentient alien and the power she gains is top tier. <sighs> Final two. Okay, I think I know what my number one book of the year is and it's probably a big cheat, but this is number two. And that is Kaiki by Vashnavi Patel. I loved this book. And I loved one of his little words because it's a long book. It's not as fantastical as I thought it would be, but that's fine because it follows this Indian lore of Kaiki and her life and what happens um and like how of a secondary character she is in like Indian mythology and Indian lore but they made her center stage in this and showed how much power she had over people and like the influence she had and it was following her throughout her whole life. I really love this. You start when she was a child following her getting this to betroth the marriage, um, her falling in love, separation, kids, what the kids get up to, her solving them, being banished, all of that. So much fun, and I highly enjoyed it. This is my number two, and my number one book of the year. Which, like, all of these five could be interchangeable, depends on my mood. Very dependable. But right now, it is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Listen, I got it. I don't think I ever talked about it, but I went to a signing and he signed it. All three of his books that I have. I read this for an on my shelf for a good time or a long time. I absolutely loved this. I love Andy Weir's writing. This follows a teacher who is sent up into space and on a one-way mission, but he wakes up with major amnesia and he doesn't remember any of the events leading up to it and he slowly unravels and learns why he's sent to space um, and how he's humanity's last hope as well as meeting another alien life form who is having the same problems on their planet as earth and rocky is one of my favorite characters of all time i absolutely love rocky to death and i'm rooting for rocky for everything they are like a creature and they're the only two in space they find a way to communicate become best pals i love them, I love them. I hear the audiobook's great, but it's with Audible and I don't have that, so <laughs> what are you gonna do? But yes, that is my number one book. Um, and just like with all of Andy Weir's book, like it's very accessible, so it's not intimidated like to sleep in the sea of stars. Like this is very digestible and easy to read. And it was just it's thick, but like it's it flew by. It flew by so fast. I love reading it. And I wanna read it more. I hope there's a sequel, cool, but I know there's not, because he said there wasn't in a in the interview. So those are my top 10 books of the year and I'm, you know, I didn't reach my goal which we'll talk about in another video but it's okay to fail my goals. No it's not. I'm really upset but it's okay. <laughs> I'll get through these hard times but it was an okay reading year. I'm not really happy with all that I've read but I'm hoping next year we'll change pace and I already have great books lined up on my shelves and I can't wait to get into them and film for you. And I'm so excited. Um, so thank you for joining me on day shit of winter reads and I hope you have a wonderful day. Oh, leave. Let me know what your favorite book of the year was or a star emoji because they're a shining star. Um, but 
Let me know what your favorite book of the year was, or how your reading year was. I hope you all have a wonderful day and night or whatever, and I hope you have fun celebrating whatever you may be celebrating. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!